All right, hello guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we are gonna be going over Zephyr Prime and how I, and how I built her out for Steel Path Survival. Uh, and Steel Path Endurance in general, Steel Path uh, uh, Disruption too. So now something about me is I typically do like one to maybe four hours tops um, Steel Path Endurance. I have gone to level cap. I don't really like playing at level cap. I find it a little bit boring. Um, you can only play rolling guard. You can only be invisible. It's, it's a little bit boring. So I usually do one to four hours. Um, and also to get to level cap with survival is like eight or nine hours in the mission. I don't really feel like doing that. So um, the way I make my builds is usually focused around one to four hour uh, steel path endurances. So, okay. Let us get into the Zephyr here. So the first thing you'll notice on the build is that there's a lot of Archon mods. But don't um, don't let that worry you too much. The Archon mods provide minuscule bonuses and increases. Minuscule, like almost unnoticeable sometimes. So, um, you know, if you don't have Archon Vitality, use regular Vitality. If you don't have Archon Continuity, regular Continuity. If you don't have fl Archon Flow, regular Flow. Same thing with Stretch. And there's actually a case to not even use Stretch, and I'll get to that at the very end. So, um, I just wanted to put that out there first, because that's the most obvious thing, is that there's four Archon mods on it. So, okay. So, Zephyr Prime and her abilities. So, her passive is going to be, while she is in the air, she gets... Um, 150% crit chance increase. Now, when we get to her one, there's two ways to press her one. There's pressing one, just tapping one, will make her fly in that direction. And if you aim at the ground while you're up in the air, she'll dive bomb and do some damage. That's not how this build is going to be using the one. We're going to use it the other way. And the other way is holding the button. So when you jump in the air at any point, you can bullet jump in the air, it doesn't matter. But while you're in the air, at any point, you can hold one, and you will retain whatever uh, like height you're at, and you'll start hovering. And when you hover, then you're activating the passive of 150% crit chance. So that's why we hover with this build. Um, the hovering is going to count as a channeled ability, so it's going to start sucking energy from you. Now, there's something to know about uh, channeled abilities, and that's certain ways of energy regeneration don't happen while you're channeling. So, like a lot of a lot of, if not all, I think, of the Zenric school doesn't work while you're you're channeled. Um, Archon stretch does not work while you're channeled. Uh, things like that. Um, the other one, the, the aura people put here, I forgot what it's called, energy siphon, doesn't work when you're channeled. So having a channeled ability gets rid of some ways of getting energy back. Um, also, this is the, the two things that are going to affect this and, and help us with the amount of energy it sucks from us is going to be energy efficiency and duration. So a lot of our build is going to be energy efficiency and duration. And that's going to reduce the amount of energy that this sucks away, like, per second. Okay. Now we get into the next uh, piece of it. And this is actually not Zephyr's ability. This is Titania's ability. But we're going to be putting it over Zephyr's, I believe it's called Airburst Rounds, maybe. Um, we're going to be subsuming out Airburst Rounds, and we're going to be putting Spellbind here. Now, there's actually two good options for this slot. And they both pretty much do the same thing, but it's important to know the differences. So, and that's Spellbind or Silence. Spellbind, you only really need duration for. And Silence, you kind of need duration and a little bit of range. Um, now, Spellbind straight up makes you immune to statuses. Silence will silence enemies in a radius around you. And... Eximuses will not be able to cast their Eximus abilities that are the ones that typically put statuses on you. 
So Spellbind makes you immune to statuses. Silence makes Eximuses not be able to cast their Eximus abilities. So you're not technically immune to statuses with Silence. And that's why I, I choose Spellbind. It's a little bit safer than Silence. Silence is, has more of a group effect. Your, your team would like you a lot more if you use Silence. Um, but Spellbind's a little bit safer for Zephyr to run over Silence. Um, now, with Spellbind, if you're going to choose Spellbind, there's not a huge reason to run Stretch. You don't really need range for anything on this build. Um, but when we get to this, this mod slot here, I'll kind of explain like why you could use Stretch, why you can keep it on, what the other options are for it. Uh, but if you choose to use Silence instead of Spellbind, you really want to leave Stretch on, because Silence does need a little bit of range. You don't want an Eximus to cast an ability outside the range of Silence and that ability to still hit you, basically. So that's why you need a little bit of range with Silence. So we're going to go to Spellbind. Now, like the first one here, like Tailwind, there's two different ways to cast Spellbind. You can tap the button or you can hold the button. If you tap the button at an enemy, it's going to make them float in the air a little bit. It's going to kind of like CC them. And if you tap the button at a friendly, it will give them status immunity. So that's a cool way of, of helping your teammate too. Um, now, if you hold the button, it's going to give you status immunity. That's what we're going to be doing most of the time. We're going to be giving ourselves status immunity. If you want to give your, your friendly allies some status immunity, that's cool too. But the big thing is you're going to be giving yourself status immunity. Okay, I think that's about it for Spellbind. Um, again, the only, strength doesn't matter here. Range doesn't matter too much with Spellbind. The only thing that matters is duration. Okay, now we get into Turbulence. Turbulence, um, actually the, the best way to look at Turbulence is to actually look at the video they show with Turbulence. So Turbulence acts as a barrier of like air, I guess you would say, that deflects bullets or any kind of projectile that goes towards it. I'm going to cough real quick. Give me one second. I'm sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. Now, I'm going to bring my thing all the way over here. I'm actually going to take off stretch for a second and just show what it looks like with regular just base range. So with a base range of six meters, uh, turbulence is fine, really, with six meters. You don't really need range with turbulence either. Um, you could just think of it as like a three meter, it goes three meters out in each direction, you know, six meters total, but it goes like three meters out in each direction. And so unless an enemy is shooting, like, let's say like a, a bombard, a bombardier, I think they're called, grenier bombardier or, or bombarder or something. Um, if they shoot the floor right outside of your turbulence, maybe the AOE would hit you. Maybe, I don't even know. I'm not really sure of the, the range of that AOE. But there's, there's not a, a huge case to put um, range on Turbulence. <clears throat> Unless, and th this would be a different build. This would be like a more defensive focused build. If you were building like a Zephyr build for defense missions where you were literally just going to plop yourself on top of the target, maybe you'd want to increase the range a little bit because then you could like defend the target by just sitting on top of it. Um, but our, that's kind of like Mimi. We're not really doing that. We're building this for Steel Path Endurance. So for Steel Path Endurance, there's not a huge reason to have range. Extra range, though, is not horrible. I mean, it increases it out to 8.7, which is, I don't think anything is going to have that big of an AoE to hit you, like, from out there. So you're definitely never going to get hit, even with AoE with Stretch on. So um, if you did want to go to Spellbind and you didn't want to use Stretch, don't feel bad, because you don't technically need it with Turbulence either there. Okay, um, so again, Turbulence really only needs duration. That's really it. You can put range. Range helps a little bit, but it really just needs duration. So this needed duration, this needed duration, and this needed duration and, and energy efficiency. So let's go to Tornadoes now. Um, the Tornadoes are similar to her 1 and her 2, where there's two different ways. You can tap or you can hold. You're going to be holding it for this build. So tapping it is going to... Um, send tornadoes to kind of randomly roam the map. And when you aim in, one of the tornadoes may, may start like moving towards your, where you're aiming in. That's nice, but you're not going to be playing it that way. You're going to be holding it down to put three tornadoes kind of like in a triangle. 
And enemies that go near those, those tornadoes are going to be sucked up and held above the tornadoes. Now, let's go over like some stats that don't really work with this. Or they work, but they, they don't work as you might think they work. Um, so first is strength. The tornado will initially have... So the tornado can actually be of different elements. And the tornado records damage produced of element types. And it will change the tornado's element type to the highest damage produced. So it starts off with just IPS. So if you look, like if you look at, I can't scroll down here, but if you look at the bottom where it says damage per second, it's, you know, slash impact puncture. But if your weapon is, uh, let's say electric, if your weapon is electric and your, the electric on your weapon is your highest element, like let's say you, your weapon had viral too. Let's say it had viral and electric, but electric is the highest. Your viral is at 200 and let's say your electric's at 201. It's going to change the tornado's element type to electric. And it's the same for, for all the other elements. You can change the tornado's element type to whatever. <clears throat> and that's where all the Archon mods have their place. They have a minuscule place where they minusculely help the, uh, the tornadoes um, because of the ability to change the tornado's element. Okay, so... Strength. What does strength do? Well, the tornado produces damage per second. It's pretty low damage per second. It's not very good. Um, but, you know, hey, it's damage. Um, so strength will increase that. It's not, you're not, you don't really need it. So strength is not really needed for tornadoes. Now we go to range. Range increases the spread, the initial spread of the three tornadoes that go in a triangle but it does not increase the suck range. The suck range is always 10 meters. So range does not affect that. So you don't really even need range on the tornado. So again, what do we need? Duration, that's really it. And in fact, the way, I'll explain how to play this build, but the way we play this build is extremely aggressively. So it says here our tornadoes last for like 36, almost 40 seconds. We're probably going to be casting a tornado every five seconds. So technically, you don't even need duration on the tornado because you're going to be casting it way quicker than what the, the duration on here is. We just go with duration because everything else scales with duration for this uh, Zephyr. Um, I think that is it with the tornadoes. Uh, when I get to some of the Archon mods, I'll probably explain a little bit about the tornadoes here because other people... Can change, and, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting. And I had to do a lot of testing this morning. Actually, it's it's 1.30 right now in the afternoon, and I got up at 8 o'clock, and I was uh, doing a lot of testing with this build. So other people can affect the uh, element type of the tornado. So if you have your buddy that, like, let's say you have no electric whatsoever. You don't have a weapon that's electric. You have no abilities that are electric. Nothing. You just put that, you just plop down a tornado and it's just its regular, you know, slash impact puncture uh, crap that it has. But your buddy has a weapon that does electric damage. He can shoot your tornadoes. It turns a tornado to electric. The electric starts doing the damage per second, which counts for you as an electric uh, type damage, and you get the effect from Archon Stretch, even though you had no electric on your weapon whatsoever. So that is something that we tested and absolutely works. So uh, my buddy came in, he had a little, uh, I think he had the Velt, and he only put uh, two electric mods on it, and I had nothing that was electric. He shot the tornadoes, I started getting uh, energy from Archon Stretch, it was awesome. Um, same thing with Continuity. So it'll turn uh, toxin procs produced either by you or friendlies into corrosive procs. Archon Vitality. It's going to uh, increase the heat procs that you or friendlies do by two. Um, the only thing that's a little bit weird here is flow. So if you look at flow, enemies actually have to die. Uh, so let me see. Enemies killed by cold abilities have a 10% chance to drop an energy orb. So... They can't just have their like damage done to them. You can't just be applying statuses. They actually have to die from a cold proc. This is going to be very rare. Most of the time, people in the tornadoes are going to die from the actual 
damage you are doing, like with your weapon shooting the tornadoes. Uh, but if we look at regular flow, I'm going to show you why we go with Archon flow over the regular flow. So Archon flow is 185, regular or prime flow is 185. Well, I would rather go with a with a 185 that has a very small, very I mean I'm like I'm like I said before, minuscule has a minuscule chance to drop an energy orb than a 185 that had no other effect. Like at least there is another effect here. It will likely not happen a lot. Sometimes, if ever, if no one has like a heavy uh, cold weapon. Um, but it's an effect that can happen. This is only a 185. So that's why I said if you don't have the Archon mods, don't feel too bad because like these are minuscule, right? This effect will almost never happen. Archon Stretch. This seems really good. But you're a Zephyr. You're probably going to be floating most of the time. So the energy gain is actually not going to happen for you. You'll only get the energy gain in the off chance that you are not floating and someone ch changes the damage type of the tornado to electric. So very small chance for you to actually benefit from this. Very small chance for you to actually benefit from this. Um, Archon Continuity. I mean, Toxic into Corrosive. That's nice. But it's not amazing i mean so this is this isn't a huge deal right here archon continuity archon vitality double heat proc that, that that's nice but again it's not really that big of a deal so vitality and continuity aren't really that big of a deal and these two you're not going to get their effects a lot of the time so don't worry if you don't have the archon mods <clears throat> okay so i think i went over all the abilities there now we're going to actually get into the mods here so of course, we said duration, 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 duration. Uh, honestly, Tornado doesn't even, even need duration. When we get into the gameplay, you'll see that we actually use this very aggressively. So, But we do need duration for the other stuff. So Constitution is going to be our duration mod. We're going to go Archon Vitality next for health. Archon Continuity is going to give us more ability duration. Health conversion is going to give us armor. Health conversion is the very cheap way to get a large amount of armor in one mod slot. So in one mod slot, you almost get 1,500 armor. And if you've seen some of my other videos, I like, uh, for Steel Path Endurance, I like a 2,000-2,000 health armor setup. So with health conversion and with um, Uniru, I get to almost 2,000. It's like 1,800-ish armor. And I get to 1,500 health. Now, typically, I would say that's not good enough, but Zephyr, most of the time, is not even going to be getting hit. So let me explain everything here. What can hit you? Well, bullets can hit you. Well, with Turbulence, bullets now cannot hit you. All right, what else can hit you? Well, melee can hit you. They can whack you in melee. Well, if you're floating up in the air, melee can no longer hit you. So what else can hit you? Well, statuses can, right? Legs misses can do statuses. Well, that's where Spellbind comes into play. Statuses can no longer hit you. So there's nothing in the game that can really damage Zephyr, um, except for, I'm trying to think, I think Blitz eggs and misses, maybe, but I think if you're up in the air, they won't hit you. Um, but there's very little in the game that actually can damage Zephyr. Uh, you still need to have health and armor just in case a stray thing happens, right? You do get hit by a stray Blitz Eximus or a status, uh, you know, your Spellbind fell fell off, it went down, you forgot to put it back up, and you got hit by a stray status. You need to have a little bit of health and armor for, your, for you to, um, like, tank at least one or two hits just in case. But for the most part, you don't really need to tank too much. And it's because Zephyr is, this makes her immune to melee, this makes her immune to uh, statuses, and this makes her immune to bullets. So <laughs> uh, there's not much that can hurt Zephyr. So health conversion is good enough. Even though with health conversion and Uniru, we don't even get to 2,000, hey, it's still good enough. It still lets you tank like one or two hits. Streamline. Um, I don't usually like streamline on builds because it's only a 30% ability efficiency uh decrease but Zephyr doesn't need, really need much for um, mods she only really needs duration so with Zephyr there's a certain point where you, where you don't really have anything like 
honestly, when I built the Zephyr out, I, I didn't even have this here. I was like, well, what the hell do I put in that last slot there? There's really nothing. Zephyr doesn't really need anything else. So um, that being said, one thing that will help you is ability efficiency because you're going to have your one sucking energy all the time. So Streamline will help you a lot. Now, if we look at ability efficiency here, let me type in efficient. See, we have fleeting expertise. Fleeting expertise is even stronger than Streamline. It's uh, 60 instead of 30. But then you have the negative duration. So if you use this one instead of Streamline, then you have to use the one that gives you 90 duration, the big one. But that's going to reduce your range. Now you have to make up for the range. So it's just better just to put Streamline and not have to, um, you know, do the whole thing where you're chasing the negatives with the uh, Corrupteds. So Streamline there. Equilibrium we're going to be using next. So Equilibrium is going to turn your health pickups into energy and your energy pickups into health. Now Zephyr is a energy monster. She needs energy. And the way we play Zephyr is very aggressive. We cast Tornado like crazy. And so not only is she normally energy hungry, but the way we're going to play Zephyr, she is really going to be sucking through energy. And so Equilibrium helps a lot with that. Next is Archon Flow. This is simply going to give us a larger energy pool of 641. So pretty simple there. Nothing, uh, you know, I, I explained the whole art, the Archon effects. Um, very minuscule chance that this actually triggers, but it could technically trigger. And then we get to this slot right here, Archon Stretch. Let me show you some options maybe for this slot. So if we type in Duration, there is an uh, Augur message. Here we go. So Archon Stretch, not super needed, especially if you're going to go with Spellbind. It helps a little bit with Turbulence, but you honestly don't even need it for Turbulence. And then the Archon version of Stretch gives you a little bit of energy, which, which would be good. I mean, I, I would pick this all the time if it worked while I was flying in the air, but it doesn't work while I'm flying in the air. So I'm only going to get that effect like the small times I'm on the ground, which is not going to be much with Zephyr. So Augur Message is really good there. So Augur Message... Um, Again, you don't really need Augur Message, though, either. Your duration is kind of good enough. But if you wanted more duration, you can go with Augur Message there. And it's the same polarity. Now, if you're going to use Silence over Spellbind, you need Stretch. You need a little bit of range with Silence. So Augur Message or Stretch, depending on what you like. Pick your flavor. And the other option there, and actually kind of a really cool option, Vigorous Swap. Now, I'm not going to use this because Vigorous Swap like requires you to be using a weapon that like kind of combos with it. Um, but Vigorous, like on a Warframe, like Zephyr, who kind of has everything she needs already and has like a free mod slot, you can use that mod slot for more damage. And Vigorous Swap will uh, increase your damage for three seconds when you equip the weapon. So... It does really good on weapons that are like battery. So you can blow the battery out in three seconds. You just, like the Tenant Cycron, for instance. I love using Tenant Cycron with Vigorous Swap. You could blow the whole battery out. You could just spam it for three seconds, go to zero, do a quick like FF to switch right back to the Tenant Cycron. And in that time, the battery is almost fully charged. And then you go to shoot again. And because you just equipped it again, you get that damage back. So weapons like that work really well with Vigorous Swap. We're not going to be using a weapon like that on Zephyr, so we're not Vigorous Swap is not an option for us, but maybe you like it, and that's a great option over Stretch, too. Again, though, if you're using Silence, you really do need Stretch. Okay. So that's the mods. Let me go over the Arcanes here. Molt Efficiency is going to just give us uh, more duration, <laughs> of course. Um our shields are almost always going to be active because we're not going to be taking a lot of hits because of turbulence. So that's perfect. Arcane Steadfast. On an ability cast, there's a 20% chance that the next three abilities will not cost energy. Well, the way we are going to play Zephyr is very aggressive. We are going to be spamming an expensive ability called Tornado. And so if we have a 20% chance that three Tornadoes are free... 
oh my goodness, I'll take it. And that's why Arcane Steadfast we're going with. Um, you can also choose uh, the energy one. What, God, what the, the, the one that everyone uses. I have like a brain fart now. The one you get from Eidolons. Oh my goodness. Arcane Energize. Ugh. So Arcane Energize is another really good one in that slot. Kind of pick pick your poison. If you like Energize, you like Steadfast, eh, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to look at Archon Shards. Um, there's no, there, I would suggest one yellow effectiveness on energy orb archon shard i would suggest one nothing else is really needed if you want to go overboard like me i have three effectiveness of energy orbs so i kind of have that arcane energize effect on my archon shards here um but i would really just say one one is suggested one of these effectiveness on energy orbs um the other two slots up top up to you i went with health i probably don't even need health I just went with it because uh, I felt like it, but you can use whatever the hell up here. And honestly, you don't need all three of these uh, yellow ones either. You can just go with one of them. You can use these slots too. So she's not super Archon uh, Shard dependent. I would suggest one yellow though. Okay. Combo Wombos now. Now we go to the Combo Wombos with Zephyr. Um, the primary is not super... I, I can't. I couldn't find a primary that like super combo wombos with her. Maybe you do, and if you and if you know, uh, tell me in the comments. But I really like the Trumna. So the Trumna can not can normally not refill its alternate fire with its alternate fire. It has to primary fire to refill its alternate fire. But for some reason, with the tornadoes, usually the first time you alternate fire into a group of tornadoes, it will charge. The alternate fire. So the alternate fire charges the alternate fire. And so typically you'll be able to like double shoot your uh, cluster bombs into uh, the tornadoes with the Trumna. Um, and that's why I like using the Trumna on Zephyr. Also, it makes her feel like an attack helicopter. When we get into the gameplay, you'll kind of like hear the sound of the Trumna. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> it sounds pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> now, something about any build. It doesn't matter if it's the Trumna or, or any weapon. So there, there's two different ways to build a Trumna, and I'm not actually using my normal way to build a Trumna. And that's because my normal way to build a Trumna <clears throat> uses mods like Galvanized Scope, where I have to aim. Maybe, I forgot, maybe it uses Bladed Rounds where I have to, like, aim. Um, now, I'm not going to be really getting headshots. I'm going to be shooting at my tornadoes. Things are going to be, like, stuck in my tornadoes. So it's important, whatever weapon you choose, you might have to make a specific, like, Zephyr set for it where your your zephyr set is the one that's not going to be using these like headshot conditionals you know you wouldn't want to go with primary deadhead because you might not get headshots because things are going to be ragdolled in the tornadoes so it doesn't really matter what you use for a primary just remember that you might need to change it because you might not want those headshot conditionals so let me come out of my trumna here um, the other part of this video is going to kind of be a showcase on a Synoid Gamma Core utility build. So I'm going to go a little bit into detail here about the Synoid Gamma Core and why I feel it's the best Zephyr uh, weapon. Um, not main weapon, it's a utility weapon, but why it's the best Zephyr secondary. So the Synoid Gamma Core is a syndicate weapon. And it's a syndicate weapon that can have a Incarnan adapter put on it. So there's an Incarnan mode for the Gamma Core, but you can put that Incarnan mode on the Synoid Gamma Core. The Synoid Gamma Core you get from uh, Cephalon Suda. So now let's read this the uh, uh, syndicate effect. Entropy. So when you gain a certain amount of affinity, I believe it's a thousand affinity, so it's very easy to get that. You trigger a magnetic explosion. It does really low damage. Damage doesn't really matter. But you restore 25% energy. And you increase your max energy pool by plus 25% for 30 seconds. Now, um, that pool is, is on your base pool. So it's not going to like increase uh, your, what was it, like 600 and something. It's not going to be 25% of the 600. It's going to be 25% of whatever the base was. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit less. But it's still going to help a lot. 
So you're going to get 25% energy and you're going to get a 25% increased energy pool for 30 seconds. It's a 30 second buff. Um, so that helps Zephyr. Zephyr is energy hungry. She wants to eat energy all day long. So the Synoid Gamma Core being able to replace your energy is amazing. Now the way we have built, the there's two ways to build the Synoid. And that's going to be the actual, like you're actually building it for damage with this one. I'm not going to show that build. That build's going to be um, probably a separate video in its own. And then you're going to have the way to build it for Zephyr. Now, the way you build it for Zephyr is going to differ than the main one. And it's because uh, the same thing. You're not going to be getting headshot effects with the, the Synoid. Um, you're not going to be, uh, you know, triggering secondary deadhead or anything like that. You're, you're, simply, you're simply wanting to shoot it a couple of times, get a couple of kills, trigger the syndicate effect, and then go back to your primary weapon. You're not really intending to keep it out and, and doing a lot of damage with it. You just want to get enough damage, enough kills, where you trigger that effect, you know, after like two shots, and then bam, you're good to go. So because of that, we're using a little bit of a weird mod setup here <clears throat> that we would normally not use. The regular Synoid Gamma Core damage build is going to be different. Just I want to make that clear. So for the Zephyr uh, Synoid Gamma Core, Galvanized Diffusion for multi-shot. Primed, well, actually, you know what I should do? I should explain the uh, Incarnate first. <laughs> so the actual gun is going to shoot a laser. And because it's an Incarnate, when you get laser headshots, it's going to fill the Incarnate bar. Now, when you go into Incarnate mode and you shoot it, it's going to shoot an orb that will suck enemies in and then explode. It actually has a pretty big AOE effect. It's going to suck enemies in, and then it's going to explode uh, for damage. The explosion of it here, the Incarnate Forms explosion, <clears throat> the uh, radial attack has cold, which means that for us to produce viral, all we need to do is put a single pistol pestilence on, and we're at viral. Um, you could also choose other elements there, too. So you don't need to do, do Viral, but I, I choose Viral. You might want to do Corrosive. Uh, corrosive is going to change it a little bit. You're going to have to use two slots for Corrosive, probably. Um, but that's okay. Magnum Force is a little bit of a weaker mod. You can take Magnum Force off, put your Corrosive there if you want. I like Viral. I only have to use one mod slot, and I can use um, the other one for uh, the pretty weak mod of Magnum Force, but there's a reason to put that on. <clears throat> okay. So, now that I've explained that, Galvanize the Fusion for multi-shot. Primed Fulmination is going to increase the explosion radius. It is not going to increase the suck radius. The suck radius is, I think, like just stuck at whatever it is. I've tested it. It didn't work. It stayed the same radius for the suck radius, but the explosion gets bigger with Primed Fulmination. <clears throat> Creeping Bullseye is going to increase its crit chance. Primed Target Cracker is going to increase critical damage. Lethal Torrent is going to increase fire rate and multi-shot. Hornet Strike is going to increase uh, flat damage. Magnum Force is going to increase flat damage. And a single mod, Pistol Pestilence, is going to mix with the Radial Attack's Innate Cold and make Viral. We're going to use Ruinous Extension to increase the beam length of our primary fire. So that's just a little bit easier to get headshots so you can fill up the, uh, the Incarnate. There's nothing really that great for the Incarnate um, for Exiluses. I mean, you could use Lethal Momentum, but it's not really needed. So I just go at Ruinous Extension. I think it's a little bit better. And for the Arcane, um, I'm going to go with Secondary Merciless, but there's also a case to be made that uh, Secondary Cucumber might even be better. And it's just because usually when you're shooting this weapon, you're not really intending for it to be out very long. You're, in, you're intending to just shoot two, maybe three shots, and then go back to your primary. And so you probably won't be able to stack Merciless very high. You might only you know get a few stacks before you end up switching your weapon. Um, so there is a case that you might get a little bit more out of Secondary Cucumber, the, uh, the one that just puts random statuses on things. But eh, kind of up to you there. Okay. So that is the Synod Gamma Core. 
Um, the other thing I tested on the Synoid Gamma Core, I want to make this clear because I thought it was going to be amazing. The uh, incarnate form produces impact procs. And I was like, oh my goodness, impact procs hemorrhage, right? Yeah, impact proc status effects have a 35% chance to apply a slash status effect. And times two when the fire rate is below 2.5. I'm looking at the fire rate here. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to get massive slash procs here. Well, the radial, the radial attack produces impact procs. And the direct attack of the incarnate produces impact procs. The problem is with hemorrhage on, the radial does not turn those impacts into slashes. The impacts stay impact. The only impact that turns into a slash is if you directly hit someone with the uh, incarnate mo mode. And because of that, hemorrhage is not an option. It's, it's not good, unfortunately. If, it, if hemorrhage worked with the radial attack, it'd be perfect. I would absolutely put it over here. And that's why we unfortunately have Magnum Force. <laughs> because it's the next best thing um, to put in this slot. There's really nothing else that's much better, um, unfortunately. And hey, it gives you a little bit more flat damage. Not that you really need it. You got 360 here, you got 165 here, and you got 220 here. Um, but, 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 let me, let me try to play the devil's advocate here. So secondary merciless is 360. But a lot of times, you're not going to have this weapon out very long. So you, you might actually not be at that 360. You might be at zero for this, or you might be at like a very low stat count. Um, and so having a starter base damage um, increase of Hornet Strike and Magnum Force being at, what is that, 220, 165, that's 320, 385. Like, that's pretty good, having both of these. Um, you know, and if you want to switch to Cucumber, you can too. I'm going to keep Merciless on. Uh, but secondary cucumber is an option right there. So that is the Synoid Gamma Core utility setup. This is going to be a weapon that you uh, fill your headshots with. So you fill the incarnate bar. And then you just switch to your primary. You keep it in your back pocket. When you need energy, you switch to the Synoid Gamma Core. You fire a few incarnate shots. And then you go back to your primary. And bam, you get some energy from it. So... Um, it's just a good utility item for energy. Okay, so I wanted to go over that. Um, let's go over the evolutions real quick too with the Synod Gamma Core because it is an incarnate mode. So first one is going to uh, do nothing, really. It's just, you know, you've unlocked the incarnate mode. The second one here, it's got two things. So Sage's Resolve increases damage by plus 10 and with a channeled ability active, we're going to have plus 25% multi-shot. We're going to have a channeled ability active most of the time because we're going to be floating in the air, which counts as a channeled ability. Now, the other one here in Fuse Shots, this is very good. And actually, I would probably use this on the, the regular damage mode of it. Like, for even if I wasn't using Zephyr. If I wasn't using Zephyr, I'd probably use Fuse Shots. So it increases damage by plus 6. But on 50 energy spent, you get more damage. You get plus 5 damage, and it stacks up to 4 times for 10 seconds. So in Fuse Shots, is probably better than Sage's Resolve on most uh, builds. But on Zephyr, where you are going to be switching to this weapon, firing a few shots, and switching out of it, you're not really going to have time to get those like stacks with energy spent. So on Zephyr and on this build, you're going to be going with Sage's Resolve. You're going to get a little bit more out of Sage's Resolve here. In the third Incarnate slot, there's nothing good here, unfortunately. So the range really only affects the... Uh, uh, beam length. So we look at the other ones though, magazine reloaded when holstered, and that doesn't do anything for the incarnate. Increased magazine capacity by plus 40, that doesn't do anything for the incarnate. Um, so we're just going to go with Moonrise Velocity. It's not really exciting, but it's the only one that's going to do anything for us. And in the fourth uh, incarnate slot, this is another easy one. So first one is crit chance and crit damage multiplier. That's the one we're going to be choosing. Next one here is, this is okay too. It's crit chance and status chance, but I, I like the full crit instead. And then this one here is just status chance. I don't like that one. So critical parallel is what we're going to be picking there. So that's the Synoid Gamma Core. That is the utility build for the Synoid Gamma Core. The actual damage build, I'm going to make a separate video on, and it'll be a lot different than that one. Um, for melees, that, that combo wombo with Zephyr, there's not much... I'm going to go with the Harudos because they um, 
they heal you. When you do a crit, they heal you up. So like, if we just look at the... Don't don't worry about this build. This build is probably not a uh, optimized build. I think this is a build I've had from like two years ago. It for This is good enough for me to kill Acolytes with, and I usually just use the Harudo for this effect, Invigorated. So critical hits have a 5% lifesteal, and they increase your maximum health by 5% for 15 seconds. And it stacks up 25 times. So... If, if you have like an oh shit moment, you took a big hit of damage and you need to heal up, you can just punch a dude. You punch a dude or, or slam down on him and bam, you're, you're back up to full health most of the time. So I like the Harudos. I feel like they, they kind of combo with Zephyr, but there's not really a lot of, of melees that combo with her. But again, if you, if you can think of one, let me know in the comments. Maybe there is a better uh, combo with Zephyr with um, melees. Um. Glaives would be good, too, because glaives, you know, you can throw while you're hovering, I believe. You don't have to, like, go into the melee animation. I just like the Harudo for the for lifesteal of it. Um, for focus schools, as we've said, Xenoric doesn't work with channeled abilities. Most of the Xenoric tree does not work with tra when channeled abilities are up, unfortunately, because I would... 100% go with this one otherwise because you know she loves energy and that's where you get energy is Zeneric. Vazarin affects affinity range. She doesn't have anything that scales on affinity range so we don't need that. Naramon is for melee focused builds. If you're going to go for like a glaive spamming Zephyr this might be an option but otherwise it's not. And so you have two options here. You have a Nairu and Matarai. Now if you were just to look at the passives Matterize passive, it's going to give you a little bit extra damage, a little bit. It's very minuscule. And Unairu is going to give you a little bit extra armor. Again, it's kind of minuscule. I'm going to go with Unairu, but these two are fine options right here. Okay, we're almost done. Almost done with the build. So we went over all of these. Now we need the pet, of course. And her little pet is going to be the best paired pet with Zephyr is going to be Death Cube. And it's because Zephyr loves her energy. She is an energy monster. And so we need a, a pet that is going to be able to feed Zephyr as much energy as she wants. So let's go into the Death Cube build. Okay, so let's go over like the basic stuff first. So we're going to have Enhanced Vitality for health. And we're going to have calculated redirection for shield capacity. The reason we don't go with metal fiber is because the starting armor on Death Cube is really, really crappy. You know, usually you want to pair health with armor, but that's so bad. That is so bad. And so metal fiber, you know, increases it by two, 250% of 150 is still really, really bad. So we're, we're not going to go with um, metal fiber, unfortunately. We're going to go with just vitality and redirection. Redirection will give them a little bit bigger shield gate. 2.38 second shield gate and vitality will give him a, a decent health pool where he can take a couple of hits before he goes down <clears throat> guardian guardian is um really good preset mod that just straight up restores your shields when they hit zero um, pretty simple not really anything else there there is an internal cooldown on it like it can't cast it they can't like machine gun cast guardian um I think it's seven seconds. I could be thinking of another precept, though. But there is an internal cooldown on Guardian, so he can't machine gun spam it. <clears throat> the next three mods are pretty much mandatory. At least I feel. I always put these on every single Sentinel in the game, no matter what. And that's going to be Primed Animal Instincts. That's going to give us the loot and enemy radar. Vacuum is going to pick us pick up our loot. We love loot, so we need a loot picker-upper. And Prime Regen is going to... In decrease our uh, companion downtime because it, it's inevitable once in a while your companion will go down so primary gen is going to help with that um, now let's go over these four mods because these four mods are basically what's going to make death cube do what we want to do so let's look at energy generator first because that's the main reason we're using death cube because it's a death cube specific mod so energy generator death cube drops an energy orb after assisting in 10 kills. He doesn't have to get the kills. He just has to assist in them. Okay. Okay. Let's read Synth Deconstruct. Enemies injured by companions have a 25% chance to drop a health orb when killed. So again, he doesn't have to kill him. He just has to injure him. So that, again, that's an assist. So he only has to assist here. He only has to assist here. Here he's going to drop an energy orb. Here he's going to drop a health orb. 
Now remember, we have equilibrium on our build. So the, the health orb here is going to equate to energy. And the energy orb here is going to equate, well, I guess the health if we need it. But hey, it's good too. Um, now, the, these two are going to require assists. So how do you get him to assist? Well, he, he needs to shoot things. So you need to have assault mode on. So Sentinel will attack the first visible enemy within 30 meters. So you have to have assault mode on, and then he'll start shooting things. Without assault mode, he will not shoot things. These will not activate. And then finally, in this slot here, this is the flex slot. Because I went through all the mods, and I'm like, what else will work on Death Cube? I went all, through all the Bond mods, all the uh, old mods on them. And there was like two options, and I'll, I'll tell you both options here. So Mystic Bond. After your companion uses abilities with cooldowns five times, you may cast a Warframe ability without expending energy. This is not the best on Death Cube. And it's because the ability has to have cooldown. I don't believe Energy Generator has a cooldown. It has a condition. It has to get, you know, 10 assists, and then he, he poops out an Energy Orb. So the only thing here that has a cooldown, unfortunately, is Guardian. So Mystic Bond is not really the best, <laughs> because, you know, hopefully you're not taking that much damage. But, I mean, Guardian will be proccing once in a while. But once in a while, you'll get a free ability because of that. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. So, next. Um, the other option is going to be Meta Ray. It's also not a very interesting option, but it's an option. So, this just heals you 12% uh, of your health over 4 seconds. Not very exciting, but it will heal you. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, let me go over the bond mods just to just to see and show you guys. <clears throat> so contagious bond requires your your guy to kill an enemy. That's never going to happen. He's built out for assists. Um, duplex bond. I tested this for about an hour this morning until I realized it does not work with energy generator. I was um, trying to figure out if the clones produced assists and they do not they do not count as producing assists even though they're hitting targets so duplex mod or duplex bond was out of the question manifold bond um this is not going to happen you're not going to be killing enemies with three or more unique uh status effects most of the time you're not really built for that um so that's not really going to happen momentous bond is okay this Yeah, when you kill an Eximus enemy, he gets a random element. This is okay. This is kind of the same usability as Mystic or Meta Ray, where it's like, doesn't really do much, but it does something, I guess. Reinforced Bond is not really good on him. This more Reinforced Bond is really good on Moa's. Restorative Bond, this restores health to companions. It's, it's okay, but it's not great. Seismic um, requires melee attack. He doesn't have it. Vicious requires melee attack. He doesn't have it. Aerial Bond seems good on, like it would be good on Zephyr. You know, she is the air Warframe um, besides Titania, but it's not really a great effect, to be honest. It's it's not really that great. So even this is not good. Um, Astro Bond's bad. Covert Bond really only works on Ash. And Tenacious Bond requires, this could work, but it requires you to have a weapon that has 50% um, critical chance or above on your Sentinel. And as we've gone over in other videos, there's only two weapons that can get a 50% uh, or higher critical chance without a Riven, and those are absolute crap tier weapons. And the whole point of Death Cube is to be producing energy. That's why you're using Death Cube. And so to neuter yourself being able to produce energy by giving yourself a crappy weapon just so you can get a 1.2 times crit damage multiplier is not a good idea. Um, this is really, I mean, this is tempting. It's juicy. I like 1.2 times crit damage multiplier. But the whole reason for using Death Cube is to uh, produce energy. So let's go into what will give us all those assists. So let's go back here. We're going to be over the Hellstrom. Hellstrom is the assist master. Not necessarily a good killing weapon. But we don't need to kill. We just need to do assist with those two abilities. So what the Hellstrom does is it fires a salvo of rockets at a target. And those rockets explode. 
Those rockets can be affected by primary ful fulmination to increase the explosion uh, radius. Uh, and there's multiple rockets per time he shoots. So let's get into the build. Now, the Hellstrom is very... If you've watched the Volklok, uh, or if you've watched other videos and you've seen the Volklok, it's similar, where the Hellstrom shoots very, very slowly. And so if you've noticed, we have all four fire rate mods. That kind of sucks to have to have all, all four of them. But even with all four of them, he shoots less than once per second. He almost shoots one, once per second here. Um, but it's, it's a little bit less than once per second. So you're going to go with all four fire rate mods. You're going to go with primed firestorm to increase your blast radius of your salvos. You're going to go with split chamber to increase the multi-shot. So, you know, more rockets, more assists possibly. Um, we're going to scroll down here. So you see we only went with malignant force. And that's because the radial attack has innate heat. Now, two good elements for assists are electric and gas. And it's because electric, when it hits a target, it arcs and it hits other target targets. And gas is good for assists because when it procs, it just kind of lingers in the air and it hits other things. So um, because this weapon started with heat, we're going to go with gas. So we just need to put a uh, malignant force on. And all of a sudden, bam, our radial just got gas there. That's, that's perfect. And now this mod right here. This, I actually might even need your guys' help. If you're watching this video, pay attention to this part. The Hellstrom has very slow rockets. The rockets that it shoots are, I shouldn't say they're very slow, but they're slow. I did a lot of testing trying to figure out if terminal velocity actually worked. I think it does. It looked like it worked, but it was hard to tell because the simulacrum, like your Sentinel will sometimes stop shooting and you have to reset the whole thing for it to, uh, start shooting again. So like I would test it with terminal velocity, then I would have to reset the whole thing and test it without terminal velocity. And sometimes I wasn't really able to like remember how it looked. So um, if you want to do testing yourself or if you know for sure, because the wiki didn't give me this answer either, but if you know for sure, uh, make sure you let me know. Say, hey, terminal velocity doesn't work. It's doo-doo. I don't know why the hell you have it on there. Hey, that's great. We can put something else in the slot maybe. Um, but if it does work, this is the way to go because uh, the, the projectiles are pretty slow. So, okay. That's the Hellstrom. It is the master of assists. Not the best damaging weapon, but it's a master of assists. So we got the Death Cube. We got the Hellstrom. We went over all of this here. And so now we're going to get into the gameplay. So I'm going to do 20 minutes on Lua Conjunction. I'm going to show off Zephyr, what Zephyr can do. And that'll be uh, pretty much it for Zephyr there. It's a pretty long video. I'm sorry for that. Had a lot of things to go over. So I'm going to kill the, the initial Drac Masters out here because I hate these guys. They steal my weapon all the time. And we'll start this, uh, this bad boy up here. Figure out where the first set of life supports are. Where are they? Down this hallway. So we're going to play this very aggressively. We're, just, we're going to be moving. We don't want to stay in one place. We want to kill everything. So I'm, I'm done with those tornadoes. Let's go to the next set of tornadoes. I'm going to cast it right here. Bam. I'm going to shoot those tornadoes. All right. No one's in there anymore. I'm going to cast tornadoes right here. Kill all those guys. Okay. I see a group here. I'm going to cast another set of tornadoes right there. Kill all those guys. Move to the next set. And so you're going to play this very aggressively. You're not sitting in one place. A lot of times when I see people playing Zephyr, they sit in one place with their tornadoes. And it's, it's kind of sad because they're missing out on so many um, kills. Because it, it's, it's very quick to kill whatever is uh, in the tornadoes. 
you only actually have to shoot at the tornadoes. You don't need to even shoot at the uh, targets. Something I should have said is when you shoot the tornadoes, enemies that are affected by those tornadoes um, take two times your crit damage. So it's actually good to shoot at the tornadoes. And that's how you play Zephyr. Just very aggressively. Don't don't let your tornado sit for 40 seconds. I don't care that the duration says 40 seconds. They shouldn't be sitting in one place for 40 seconds. If you're playing it aggressively, you see a pack of enemies, you shoot the tornadoes at them. Um, just remember, don't be like me and forget to <laughs> recast your turbulence because then you could die by accident. <laughs> That's something I gotta get a little bit better at, is remembering to recast turbulence in spellbind. I got killed by a random element or a random bullet coming uh coming through me. And I mean Death Cube is just pooping out energy orbs. He's got full blown diarrhea of energy orbs coming out of him right now. And as you see, I'm spamming Tornado. This is an expensive ability. I'm spamming this thing. It's not really cost me anything. I ha it's between between a lot of things. It's between uh, steadfast proccing sometimes. So sometimes things are straight up free. It's through Death Cube giving me energy. Uh, it's through Equilibrium. Everything, really. One thing I don't like about Spellbind is that it doesn't tell you the timer on the bottom right. I don't know why it does that. The timer is up on the top right instead. I wish it was down in the bottom right because sometimes I do forget to recast Spellbind because of that. You can also cast Zephyr abilities while you're uh, reloading up in the air, which is really cool. Only Zephyr abilities, though. Like here, I don't, I don't have my Turbulence on, so he was shooting me a little bit. I think if I try to reload and I cast Spellbind, yeah, if I cast Spellbind, it, it stops my reload. But Zephyr abilities are able to be cast um, while reloading, which is actually really good with the Trumna, because the Trumna has a ridiculous reload. Oh my goodness. Reload sucks in the Trumna. So at least you could do something while you're uh, while you're reloading this this bad boy. But this is why I call it the attack helicopter build, because that's what it feels like and that's what it sounds like. You're just hovering in the air as a little attack helicopter, blasting away. Make sure that you are not too high. If you're too high in the air, your vacuum, like your your pickup for energy orbs on the ground, won't happen. So you you can't be like floating way way up there. Um, I mean, you can, but you're going to run out of energy eventually. Like, a Death Cube might not keep up with your, your energy at that point. All right, I guess we, I guess we should get out of... Uh, Had some life support issues there. I'm gonna hit another one here. I wasn't paying attention to the life support. <laughs> I didn't wanna fail this run because of life support. That would have been embarrassing. Um, the acolyte won't be sucked up, but he'll be damaged by the tornado. So all you gotta do is shoot your tornado near the acolyte. I don't even know where the acolyte is, but he's uh, he's taking damage somewhere. Where 
Or a Yakolite. Oh, there he is. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to shoot my tornadoes. I'm not even going to have to shoot at... I don't even have to shoot at the Acolyte. I just shoot my tornadoes right next to him. Boom, and he's dead. If you, if you get too high or too low, just go back on the ground, find like a proper height you want to be at, and then just hold one, and then you'll stay at that height. Oh, you know what? We were going to go over the Synoid Gamma Core, too. So the Synoid Gamma Core, what you should be doing, and I, I didn't really do it. I didn't follow my own advice, is you should be filling it up. So find it, find a dude, headshot him a little bit. Let's find, let's find another dude. Let's fill this up. Uh, fill him up here. All right. Now it's full. I'm going to go into incarnate mode, and then I just switch back to my primary. And I can go back to flying in the air and do my little thing. And now, anytime I need energy, um, all I have to do... Let me kill this little pack real quick. Uh, all I have to do is I have to switch to my Trumma. Find another, another little pack. Oh, why did I do that? I switched out of my... I'm sorry. That, that was my bad. I clicked my Incarnan mode while I was Incarnan, so I got rid of it. So you find a pack. And you just go pop, pop. And it sucks them in. Blows up. Bam, it just triggered the uh, the effect. So I got energy, and I, and for 30 seconds, my energy pool has increased. So if there's any, if there's ever any a time where you need... Uh, I don't know if I'm talking correctly... But if there's a time where you really need um, energy, that's where the Synoid Gamma Core comes in. And that, that doesn't have to be just on Zephyr. Maybe you, you like playing another Warframe that is really ammo hungry, or not ammo, energy hungry. You can use that Synoid Gamma Core build to basically do the same. You just keep it in your back pocket. Look, I can still switch to it. I still have Incarn in here, so I can go boop, boop, boop. And you see in the bottom right the, uh, the Syndicate effect filling up? It's not fully full right now. i got to throw one more. Boop, and it just triggered. And now it's gonna now it's gonna count down. <clears throat> so you can use that on on uh, any any war from really that's that's uh, energy hungry. Okay, let's go back to our our tornadoes and our trumna. The attack helicopter. The arson eximuses are annoying. So you're immune to statuses. They can't actually do damage to you, the Arson Eximuses. But when you're hit by the wave, it pushes you up. And so sometimes you'll have to actually like go back down and like reset your height that you're at, which is a little bit annoying. Um, you know, I think she's producing a lot of yellow life sports, but I think they're all on the ground. I think I gotta go pick them up. There we go. 65, let me go to the other room. And bring these guys over there. Now let me show you what happens if I tap one. <laughs> I go flying. And it's hard to, to control yourself with that. But if you have to... If you're in the open world, it's actually pretty cool. But like... Oh, in the wall here now. So I don't tap one a lot of times. But if you really need to move any distance, that's the way to go. So I usually just hold one so I can hover. And the same thing with Spellbind. You can you can tap Spellbind. Let me find an enemy here. I'll tap tap it on this guy. So he's floating in the air now. He's kind of like CC'd. I don't usually use that, though. I just use Spellbind to cast on myself like that. So I hold one, and I hold two when I cast it. And the same thing with Tornadoes. I hold four to cast them in one place instead of letting them, um, like, wander around. You know, and this, this whole time, I still have, I can go to my Synoid uh, Gamma Core, and I still have half an Incarnate in my back pocket if I ever need to use it. If I'm, if I'm needing energy, just throw that bad boy out, and I'll, I'll recharge myself. But as you saw with this build, I have, we have so many ways of regaining energy. We might, 
honestly have overdone it a little bit, but that's okay. All right, we got the uh, Acolyte coming pretty soon. Oh, he's in our tornadoes. It's very nice. We can just shoot our tornadoes. Boop, and he's dead. So aggressively use Tornado. That's that's the best way to play Zephyr. Don't just plop it in the middle and hope that enemies are idiots and walk into it. Find the groups of enemies, throw a Tornado right in the middle of the group, and then massacre them all. Uh, the other cool thing, too, is uh, tornadoes do not have to have line of sight. Like, let's say this was a multi-story um, map right here, and this floor was here, but there was another place for enemies to be underneath it. The tornadoes will still try to suck them, even, even if they're within 10 meters, like, not in line of sight. And because they are affected by the tornadoes, all you have to do is shoot the tornado, and you'll still damage them, even though you can't see them and they're, they're on the floor uh, underneath you. So... Um, you know, there's a lot of Warframes that have crowd control abilities, like um, like uh, Korra's Cage and Hydroid's um, Tentacles, for instance. Like, a lot of those abilities, enemies sometimes will get stuck in places that are out of line of sight where they can't take damage, and it kind of sucks. Well, this one, you don't really have that. I mean, I, I can not see these enemies behind the pillar, and all i got to do is shoot, shoot at this uh, tornado, and it's going to kill them in the back there. Oh, I went too high because that stupid Fire Exynos. Didn't actually do damage to me. He just pushed me in the air. I hate those fire X misses. But Zephyr is an extremely powerful Warframe. Uh, one of the best damage potential Warframes in the game because of, because of this. If played aggressively. You have to play Zephyr aggressively for her to be competitive in damage. If you look at this room and go, oh look, here's the middle of the room. I'm gonna put tornadoes here. Come on, guys, please walk into them. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be that good. You gotta find the groups of enemies and kill them. Hope you guys enjoyed my uh, my little uh, voice I did. <laughs> my Muppet voice. So we had six minutes left. We'll finish finish this out. Yeah, I'm too high up in the air for melee enemies to hit me, so they're not going to do damage to me. I have turbulence on. Well, I should. Here we go. I'm going to recast it. <laughs> Don't be like me and leave it off. Um, I have turbulence on, which means that bullets can't affect me. Um, even enemies' AOEs can't really affect me, as long as uh, their AOE doesn't go further than your uh, turbulence range. Um, and then uh, statuses can't affect me because of Spellbind. Um, you can use Silence, too. Silence is good, too. It's just that some enemies that aren't Eximuses can still produce statuses, like Slash procs and things. So that's why I think Spellbind is sometimes, sometimes, sometimes better than Silence. Not always. If you want a more of a team-oriented uh, setup, Silence is really good. Because your, your teammates will be happy that Eximuses can't do their thing. <laughs> Where Spellbind, you don't really get that. Yeah, they're all dead there. See that? How he, he pushed me in the air? I hate that. I hate those those arson eximuses. Come on, immunity to status effects should also mean that too. <laughs> All 
All right, Malice, he's dangerous. He could make me kill myself. So with Malice, you want to make sure if you have the bubble on you. He put the bubble on me. I'm going to roll out of it, leave the bubble behind me, and now it's safe to fight Malice. Now I can go back in the air, and I can go... And he's dead. One shot. I hate Mal Malice is a, a very dangerous acolyte. Probably the most dangerous. But violence is dangerous to some Warframes, like uh, Titania. Violence is very dangerous, too. But most of the time, Malice is the most dangerous acolyte. But, I mean, this entire time I have been spamming tornadoes, and I have not run out of energy. I, I haven't, every time I look at my energy, I haven't dipped under 600. I'm sure there, there have been times that I have just haven't been looking there. Okay, I'm going to get this life support. I had a little bit of a stutter there. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was the stream or the game. I don't know if um, Turbulence will stop these lasers. I don't know. I'm a little bit afraid to go near that Batacor because of that. I'm a scurred. I'm a scurred to go near that Batacor and find out. I might find out today. Zephyr is one of my favorite Warframes in the game. Um, I had originally built her out like two years ago, and when I wanted to do this video today, I was like, okay, I have to review the, the, the video or the build because it was two years old. I've learned a lot in those two years. Like maybe things have changed. I, I didn't have to change too much, but there was a lot of things that needed like one forma on them, just like a little bit of a change. And um, so it took me like four hours this morning. Uh, between switching formas, doing some testing, making like like duplex bond took me like almost a full hour to test. Uh, the tornadoes affects how like your allies can actually change their their elements. So like you know this is your ability, but your ally can shoot into it and they can change the element of the tornado, which is pretty cool. I think my element that's the highest on my trum that is viral so these tornadoes are probably like viral tornadoes which is okay oh is some weapon oh yeah they did like why am i shooting the gamma core all of a sudden damn it salt remember to put your turbulence on that's why you're taking damage Almost at the 20 minute mark, and then we will we'll head back to orbiter. Got another acolyte coming. Let me hit this little life support while I'm here. I think that's violence. He's going to turn our abilities off. That's going to kind of suck. Let me see here. If I can get him. Yeah. Does he turn my. He might turn my. Uh... Now he died. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I was going to say he might turn my tornadoes off too, but. Alrighty, let's head to Extract. That'll be it. Let's use our, our one tap. Oh my goodness, that thing flings you. I gotta go down there. Oof.
So I'm going to just briefly go over the important things or like the um, optional things again. And then that'll be it. I don't want, this is already a very long video. I don't want it to be super long. So I don't need to do a whole talk through again. But for Zephyr, this very last slot is kind of optional. Archon Stretch. Um, if you're going to go with Silence instead of Spellbind, you need Stretch. You need a, a ranged mod um, to make your Silence a little bit bigger. Uh, if you're going to go with Spellbind, you don't technically need Stretch. It helps a little bit with the Turbulence, but you don't really even need it, need it on Turbulence too much. Um, the other option would be, if you type in Duration, if you type in Duration, it's going to be um, Message, Augur Message would be your next best option for duration because we already have continuity on. We already have constitution on, which would be the two big ones. And so Augur Message would be the next biggest duration boost. Um, I actually used Nearest Hatred for a little bit too because <laughs> I was like, hey, I kind of want a little bit more health too. Um, but that's only 15%. You get a little bit more out of Augur Message here with 24. So those are the options on, on that last slot there. Again, don't be afraid of the Archon mods. This build works exactly the same, exactly the same without Archon mods. It's just that there is a minuscule chance that you will get an energy orb once in a while. There is a minuscule chance that you will be on the ground when an ally with an electric uh, heavy weapon shoots at your tornadoes. You will sometimes get toxin effects to be corrosive. You will sometimes get double heat procs. These are very minuscule effects on Zephyr, but they are technically effects, and that's why I use them. But you don't need to use them. You can use their normal versions. Um, oh, I don't think we went over these top two here. Okay, so Anchored Glide, Zephyr also has a passive where she is floaty. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. And that it's because I play other Warframes. I play a bunch of Warframes. And so when every Warframe moves the same, and then all of a sudden I go to Zephyr and she's floating in the air and I, I like my bullet jumps don't feel the same anymore. I don't personally like that. It, it actually makes my game, like it makes my movement a lot worse. And so anchored, I put anchored glide on. It's a augment for Zephyr, unfortunately, that just removes her passive. Uh, and it gives you 15 ability strength. As we've said, ability strength doesn't really do anything. Um, what it does do, though, I think it does it, if I remember correctly. I believe, yeah. So it affects your speed while you're in your hover mode. So while you're in your hover mode, ability strength affects your speed, makes you hover a little bit quicker. You don't really need that. As you saw, I didn't really have any issue hovering around. But that's kind of my copium that I huff about while I uh, put Anchored Glide on. I'm like, well, I get that a little bit of ability speed, strength so I can move a little bit quicker. And that, that's why I'm using it. Not because I hate Zephyr's actual passive. So, And then the, um, aug the aura. There's not um, anything great in the aura slot. Corrosive projection is just always good. Not necessarily for you unless you need to, like, unless you're using a weapon that like you have to hit a certain armor strip break point, but corrosive projection is good in case like you're, it'll help your, your allies maybe reach their armor strip break points easier. Um, it's just an okay aura. The other okay aura, like I'm using the Trumna, which is a rifle. So a rifle amp would be good. If you were using a pistol as your main damage source and pistol amp or a shotgun might use shotgun amp. Um, those would also be good auras. There's an aura that's focused on flying too, aerodynamic. Um, takes 24% reduced damage while airborne. That's also okay. You don't really need that though because you're not really taking much damage, but it's an option. Um, there's just not really great auras for for this slot, and that's why I just put on corrosive projection. Like when in doubt, put on corrosive projection. It'll help your team reach their armor strip uh, breakpoints. That's really it for her. The primary doesn't really matter what you use. I like the Trumna because I like to feel like an attack helicopter, and I think it's awesome. Uh, the Synoid Gamma Core is a really good uh, combo wombo with Zephyr. It helps you get energy. As you saw, we didn't really have any energy issues. But sometimes when you're with a team and like your team's pulling packs of enemies in other rooms and so like you're not killing as much, sometimes you could have uh, energy issues. So the Synoid, Synoid Gamma Core helps with those situations. Haruto is a little bit of a combo wombo in situations where you need to restore your health. You just have to punch a dude once and you're at full health. Um, Death Cube, we went over him. I don't think there's really anything there. Oh, and um, again, 
with the Hellstrom. If anyone knows in the comments if this does work or does not work, please tell me. Because I think it works, but I am not 100% sure. The, uh, the way to test this was uh, hindered by the ability of, um, or by the fact that Sentinels will just sometimes stop working in the simulacrum. And so you have to reset everything. And in that time I'm resetting, I'm trying to remember what the fire rate was. So if anyone knows for sure, let me know in the comments. But it's not a big deal anyway. If, if this didn't work, I, I don't even know what the hell I would plop in here. Maybe some more uh, uh, multi-shot. Uh, can we put that other multi-shot mod on? Let me see. Multi, yeah, Vigi Armaments. So if Terminal Velocity didn't work, plop Vigi Armaments instead. Not really that big of a deal. We don't really, this is a simply an assist build for the Hellstrom for Death Cube. So more, more multi-shot means more assists. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked the build. Um, sorry, it was kind of a long one today. If you liked it, give it a like. And thanks so much. Take care, guys.